Hello, and welcome back to the Tyler Moore, where today we'll finally learn more about the famed Plotsky family of Milltown, as promised so long ago. The Plotskys were one of the first families in Milltown generations ago, and over the years they worked hard at the mills and saved their pennies, and after several decades they rose to be one of the most prominent families in the region after a number of real estate acquisitions and by maintaining a promise to provide affordable housing in Milltown to the working families of the area. Their reputation as fair and equitable landlords and lenders has made them one of the most loved families in the Tyler Moore, and now they've promised a big help in the effort to expand the Tyler Moore's housing to help the influx of newcomers. They'll be developing a new neighborhood of Plotsky Town, just southwest of the Old Cemetery, as well as Plotsky Park, a noise barrier between Milltown Polytechnic Arena and the neighborhood of Stanton. They will also be granting a fund to build and maintain the Tyler Moore Portrait Gallery, located in what was set aside to be Elm Park, but has sat as a vacant lot all this time. The Plotskys aren't stopping there either. The corridor linking Stanton and Sophia with Milltown is currently a failed shopping district, which is largely abandoned and will be redeveloped as a mixed-use area, preserving the few successful businesses there and incorporating new high and mid-density residential buildings. Thank you so much for joining me here again in the very Mary Tyler Moore. Always a pleasure to adventure with you. Now we're going to start by dezoning all of the commercial space that either didn't develop or had become abandoned and the abandoned buildings had been demolished. Um, there's a glut of retail in the area. It was intended for the factories of Milltown to be sending the products to, but that didn't work out quite so well. So we will be redeveloping it in a mixed use fashion. Um, there's going to be a lot of little details that we're going to put in here just to fix it up and make it feel a lot more realistic and more like a lovely little city. So we're going to begin um, by placing ads. These are the uh, same artists who will be performing at the Isabella Riverwalk Amphitheater. They will also be doing sets down here at the Jazz Hole in Stanton. So if you're like me and you're not a big fan of big crowded places and uh, you don't really find it appealing to go down to the amphitheater with thousands of people for a big concert, you can curl up at a tiny little table here at the Jazz Hole, have a drink and a piece of pie, and listen to some great live music in a much more quiet and intimate setting. I'm also going to make sure we've got plenty of parking out here because uh, there's no parking on this main street with the streetcar line. Um, and uh, it's kind of the way the road hierarchy is set up here. It's going to be quite a walk to get uh, from the street parking to the businesses. So I've put in a pedestrian pathway just for better connection, um, also to the streetcar stop here for the residents of the neighborhood. And we're going to be filling this in with a nice custom parking lot. I like to use uh, these uh, parking assets here piece by piece. That way I can customize my parking lots to fit whatever shape and size lot I have. I can make all kinds of unique parking lots. They look more realistic and it really doesn't take any more work. Personally, I think it takes less work to do it this way than it does to fiddle around with the network loads of parking lots and big parking lots and whatnot. I prefer to keep it simple. Uh, make sure we have plenty of lighting. And now we're going to be working with these wonderful JP Planter Networks that are pretty new on the workshop. These give you so much opportunity to really fill in those ignored corners. So here in another parking lot, I'm going to be filling it in. You just uh, use the network as you would for any, um, any network, whether it be a fence or a road. Draw whatever shape you want. Fill in the dirt area with these little pieces. Um, I did try using PO to stretch one piece. It doesn't work so well. 
um, easier just to fill it in with little bits and pieces um, until you get it filled in. And then I'm just going to use a nice assortment of spring wildflowers. Something casual, something easy to maintain, but still really beautiful. I'm going to make sure the color palette is pared down to something simple. So I'm going to only use two colors, blue and white uh, for the flowers. Of course, there's green for the tree leaves and whatnot. Um, but nice and simple, just something that's pleasing to the eye, will be helpful to the pollinators in the neighborhood, uh, gives a little bit of breathing space for people who, you know, have to walk through the parking lot instead of feeling like you're walking on an airport tarmac. You have a beautiful garden right beside you. So these are definitely going to be featured quite prominently all throughout my builds. Um, as the spring wears on and the city gets parkified even more, um, there will be a lot of these lovely JP network planters. So thank you so much, JP, for those. Uh, go check them out on the uh, workshop. And here we're going to be detailing some backyards on a laneway. Everybody's, well, not everybody, a lot of people will be getting garages and sheds and fences and trees. I'm going to make uh, the part, this corner of Stanton really finished out. Um, th this is the area that is a budding Milltown. Um, so this whole region along this corridor to Milltown is really going to be polished up and finished. Um, really a good model of what the rest of Stanton will eventually fill out like. Um, if the time comes that I do a live stream, I think it'd be a great activity to do during a live stream, just detailing backyards and laneways while chatting with people. Sounds like fun to me. Um, if that sounds like fun to you, please leave a like or a comment down below. I would love to hear from you if you have any ideas of things you would like to see in the Tyler Moore. Just filling out some fence work here. Um, the first one is always a little bit complicated to finagle around, but then it gets much easier. When you have Move It, you can copy and paste any section you want, uh, and you can make any sort of um, configuration of the fences with Move It very easily. Um, it makes a tedious task much more palatable, and uh, it doesn't take away from the little bit of fun time that I have to play this game. Uh, it doesn't feel like a chore, it's just uh, more detailing and more making my city beautiful. will be complete without posters or murals on blank walls. So here I'm including my very favorite talk show hosts of all time, the lovely Troy and Abed in the morning. Um, if you're not familiar with Community, the TV show, or Troy and Abed, um, I highly recommend you stop watching this and YouTube them right now because Troy and Abed are hilarious and fantastic and lovely. Um, really wish they would have just spun that off as a completely different series on its own. Of course, I'm going to be adding seating areas and the ubiquitous garbage and recycling pails, some greenery for the birds and for shade for the people, and why not make one of them a lovely little flowering pear tree? Uh, might as well bring some spring beauty into a little pocket park uh, whenever we can. And I'm going to try to um, almost animate the area by adding some still people. Um, they're not animated, but it makes it look like the area is a lot more lively uh, when people are sitting on the benches and the tables, when there are bicycles parked in the bike racks. Um, it all just looks a little bit better. And we're going to make sure that in all of this redevelopment, we're not going to forget that we need some lovely open social spaces as well. Um, the whole region was really um, just sort of obliterated by uh, the businesses not working out. Um, 
So really, there was a lot of empty open space and vacant lots. We can't really just suddenly fill that up with mid and high density. Uh, that'll be a shock to the residents in the area who already live there um, without any sort of social gathering spaces, places for people to meet, pe uh, places for people to enjoy spending time outside um, where you're not isolated in a park, but, you know, a good place for people watching, a good place, um, you know, to greet your neighbors as you walk by and you see them having breakfast out there on the patio. Uh, so we're going to create this lovely Mammer Cafe. Mammer is a wafer company from Austria. Um, it probably doesn't mean anything to most people, um, unless you are either part Austrian or Austrian. I have Austrian ancestry and I have always adored my Mammer wafers. So I'm really grateful to be able to have that little detail here, but also people who are fans of the TV show Friends might recognize the logo Mammer. Um, the longest time there was a sign of Mammer wafers at the Central Perk Cafe that was always perched on the shelf just behind the crew on the couch. Um, so anytime you saw Ross and Phoebe having it out in an argument in the central perk and Gunter had to step in, you would see that Mammer Wafer sign um, sitting on the shelf between them. And so I, I really love having these little slight details that bring a lot more character and life into the build. Um, so instead of just plopping a corner shop and leaving it and calling it a day, I take maybe another five minutes and I detail it out with some tables, some signs, some seated people, a little cafe business, a fence around it, and boom! In almost no time at all, I have a really beautiful little vignette in my city. A lovely place for people to go, a lovely place for people to observe as they walk by. It just looks beautiful. Everything from it looks beautiful when you're sitting here and observing the people go by. Um, really, these spaces are necessary in most um, cities because we need those open spaces to meet and greet and socialize. And filling it all in with apartment buildings and not leaving spaces for people would just be detrimental to the neighborhood. I'm going to add some lovely twinkle lights in here too so it can be, uh, you know, in, in service at nighttime as well. Um, not just for breakfast and coffee, it's also for dinner and late night tapas. Because why not? Now we're going to get to the portrait gallery. Here is what would have been Elm Park. It has a beautiful subway stop right here. It is one of the biggest subway transfer points in the city. And we have very few people using this subway station. So there is a need to offer something here in this space that is going to attract a lot of people to it in order to utilize the underutilized subway system. So I'm using this absolutely beautiful and pretty recent add to the workshop. It is an art gallery or art institute in Baltimore. Um, just a stunning building and a stunning rendering of it. So thank you so much for all of the creators who add so much wonderful stuff to the workshop for us to use in our cities going to make sure we have lots of planter beds. Um, these are not the same um, network planters. Instead, I'm using network curbs for this with uh, ploppable grass on top because I wanted this planter bed to be green instead of um, dirt or mulch underneath it just to, uh, just to add a bit of variety so it doesn't look like I had the same landscaper do every single lot in the city during this redevelopment project. And we'll be sure to add lots of lovely greenery and flowers. These are some red camellias, some weeping willow trees just for some drama and romance, 
and then we're going to fill in the rest with some more low profile bushes and things so we don't um, steal away from the beauty of the building itself. We want the building to be a focal point. Um, we want it to be the kind of place that tourists stop to take pictures of and selfies of. Um, it really is such a beautiful building and such a beautiful asset. We need to highlight it instead of cover it up with a otherwise beautiful forest of trees, um, but we will give the building a chance to shine. Some lovely bluebells in here, um, and now we're going to make this an accessible building, just as we did with the planning division in um, Martha's Point a while back. We're going to be using the same um, concrete piece with some good uh, rainwater drainage on it, um, those little grooves in the middle there will help to uh, get the water off of the ramp um, instead of having it run down like a water slide. And from here we'll be using PO to manipulate the shape, the size, the length, the height, the angle that it's on, and we will very soon be able to have a beautiful ramp up to this gallery. Now that was quite a big ramp, uh, side stairwells there, lots of greenery, tried to make it look as beautiful and as safe and inviting as possible, but now we have this blank space at the back, and I think uh, it would be nice to fill it in with some gardens and cafes where um, patrons at the gallery would be able to go and kick back for a nice little lunch after spending the morning in the portrait gallery. Now here is an example of a large housing development that I'm going to build while still keeping it human scaled. Um, it's going to be mostly mid-density, uh, mid-rise, there will be lots of greenery in the back um, so that pretty much everybody who lives here is going to have a theoretical backyard shared, but it's theirs, and um, lots of trees so that the birds and squirrels can run up to the kitchen window and watch you eat your breakfast, um, and you can hear the birds singing, and you can see the trees blowing in the wind that are not 
100 meters below you, way down there, uh, it's going to feel like you have a connection to the planet, to the Earth. So you don't feel so disjointed. Um, you're not just under the impression that you are an individual floating in a box in the middle of nowhere uh, with no one else to think of. It's important that your home is connected to the rest of society, at least visually, so that you feel like you are part of it and you care about the neighborhood around you. Um, so here is a lovely way to grossly expand housing um, to provide affordable units that are not too fancy and not too big, but still have the opportunity to be large enough to house a family um, or a, a group of roommates so that uh, we have multiple options for different lifestyles. And we're really providing options for homes for a broad range of people. And here in the backyard, we're going to make it very park-like um, nothing too fancy, but just something that will calm things down, make it feel a bit more natural, um, and just a nice little respite space for the apartment residents to go and take a break on a nice warm summer day. And once we're finished detailing back here, we're going to do a very brief city tour. Not of what we've done, but just lovely vignettes of the city. Like Peace Square. Here we're going to be developing Plotsky Park. As you can see, there is a need for a buffer between this large arena and its accompanying grade school and uh, these lovely little homes, these row homes down here in Stanton. Um, now the Plotskys are doing this as the arena is part of Milltown Polytechnic. And the Plotskys, uh, they just feel like this is extending a bit of a neighborly hand just to to say you know hey neighbors in stanton we know our arena is really noisy milltown is a small city uh, with not a lot of funds it's not a big tax base um, but we feel like we need to step up and do our part to keep your half of the neighborhood still lovely for everybody to live in um, so the Plotskys, as part of their redevelopment plan, are adding in the development of Plotsky Park. There's going to be a large swimming complex here, um, including a wave pool for the kids, a regular pool with a little um, uh, lounge area, as well as an adults-only pool for those who don't want to be swimming with the kids splashing around and playing water polo. Uh, using a PTT toilet, uh, both for a toilet and a change room, works for both ways. Um, always a great option. And then uh, we've also pathed the park so that the residents will have an easy and lovely meandering route, either to walk to school or to go to a hockey game um, or to go to classes at the university nearby. Um, Lots of little details in the area here. Um, here we've got 
booths. They're sort of like the uh, ticket booths to go inside so that uh, you won't just be able to hop the fence and get into the pool or just walk off the street and fall into the pool. There definitely needs to be an access point, a closed um, restricted access when it comes to a pool because um, drowning is a serious issue, especially for young children and small pets. So uh, we're going to make sure that if we want this to be more realistic, we're going to make sure that it is safe and easy for everybody to use and enjoy. All right, I'm just going to be adding a little gazebo here at this one entrance, and we're pretty much done with Blotsky Park. Uh, you saw lots of greenery and lots of detailing, but I didn't want to drag it out because it really isn't necessary for you to see every little tree that gets plopped down. Um, detailing it out so that it's going to be, uh, it'll feel like a separate little space, almost like a room outdoors, um, a lovely little area to head, um, you know, a good meeting spot. When you say let's meet in the park, it's important to have a landmark to meet at because meeting anywhere in the park you could get lost. So it's just going to be a lovely little uh, grouping area at the front of the park. And now with the park finished, we are going to get started on the big project here, which is the build out of Plotsky Town, the brand new neighborhood uh, completely built out and developed by the Plotsky family and their very generous um, act of kindness to help this city in its developing, um, to help middle and lower income families have a decent and respectable home to live in. So I'm just going to go through here and add in all of the homes. I'm going to speed it up a bit so that we don't have to spend too much time considering which buildings to plop.
So as you can see, I'm including a mix of high density, low density, and mid density. Um, some great Norwegian duplexes in the back there, or sorry, not Norwegian, they're Greenlandic actually. They're from Nuuk, uh, Greenland. And here's an example of a lovely little Tudor home. Um, someone who bought a little offshoot lot that was kind of odd shaped and not too valuable, decided to build a lovely little family home here with some window boxes and an arbor of greenery and hedges around. Um, so there's a mix. There's a little bit of everything for people here, not just for people uh, with different lifestyles, but also visually so that as you walk through the neighborhood, you don't feel like you're just in a big concrete canyon and you don't feel like you're in Pleasant Valley. Um, it's a nice mix of everything all together, which when you have a very dense city, you should have a multitude of mixtures in together like this. Um, you shouldn't just have all the towers in one neighborhood and all the homes in another. Um, that's what causes terrible traffic. And a lot of the social problems in our cities are related to this, you know, um, disjointed planning. But here in Milltown, the Plotskys want to ensure that there's a mix of everything all around so that it's it's more like a salad. Uh, you really don't want a salad where you get one mouthful of arugula, one or rocket in Britain, uh, one mouthful of lettuce, one mouthful of carrot, and one mouthful of dressing. That would be terrible. Um, a salad is best when it is all mixed in together, so there's a variety in every bite. And this is sort of the analogy that the Plotskys want to use in building out their new neighborhood here. Um, it might not look like the most um, beautiful thing you've ever seen. It might not look like uh, an elite neighborhood in Monaco, but that's not what this is. And in all honesty, elite neighborhoods in Monaco are not all they're cracked up to be. Um, so here it, it is a hodgepodge of architectural styles, of colors of buildings, of placements, um, but that's what builds interest. Um, if you ever look at a Where's Waldo book and you just saw a picture of Waldo sitting on a park bench in the middle of, uh, you know, a park full of similar park benches with nobody sitting on them, it would be very easy to find Waldo. There's no visual variety in that. There's no fun, there's no challenge, it's not as enjoyable. Um, here in this community, we have a lot of visual variety, a lot of density uh, variety, and it's all mixed in quite well. So hopefully, um, if everything goes to plan theoretically, and as in other communities built out like this show, um, or it can be, can be very successful communities, hopefully Plotsky Town will follow in those footsteps. Either way, the Plotskys have contributed a great deal to the housing stock in Milltown and in Stanton and Sophia. Uh, they've really done a great deal of work in the community to make everything come together in a much better way uh, to improve the problems that we've had. We needed more housing and fewer abandoned retail shops. Um, we needed more amenities for the new people who were moving into the neighborhood to enjoy, and we needed to improve the neighborhood for the people who were already there. And the Plotskys have accomplished all of those tasks in a relatively easy way. And there you have it. The Plotskys have done all of these tasks. They've developed Plotsky Town, the park, portrait gallery, and redeveloped all of that abandoned retail into something much, much better. Um, the Plotskys are revered uh, throughout the Tyler Moore for their efforts in helping to build a better city together. And here you can see the finished result. Uh, Plotsky Town is filled in there by the cemetery, the park is looking nice and green, and this whole area is now a lot more than a bunch of empty buildings and open uh, vacant lots. Finally, the city in this corridor is completed.
and want to thank you so much once again for joining me here for another adventure in the Tyler Moore. I do enjoy this so much. I hope you do as well. Be sure to leave a comment and a like. Uh, if you want to see more, come back for more. There's plenty to see in the Tyler Moore. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.